How did that just happen? What bad day, Jordan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Wired Outdoors. We have a great show for you today, and it's all about hunting the Pennsylvania State game lands. PA is my home state, and I've been blessed in my life, you know, to be able to hunt my parents' farm. But we know a lot of people in Pennsylvania, they don't have that option. They're hunting the state game lands, and that can be tough. So that's what today's show is all about. We're gonna be joining field staffer Don Ott, who's been with Wired Outdoors for the past 10 years. And year in, year out, he is successful on the Pennsylvania state game lands and taking a good buck. So let's join Don and talk all about hunting the PA state game lands. Hello and welcome to Wired Outdoors, I'm Don. This morning we're heading out onto the Pennsylvania game lands. I hunt game lands, uh, high pressured animals, lots of people, lots of interference, and that interference doesn't have to be like people or hunters or hunting season. A lot of people walk, bike, hike, ride horses in these areas. When you pull into those gravel parking lots, those deer know you're there. So I head in deep, you know, most of my scoutings an average of six to 12 mile a day. I try to maximize my time of field to find these bucks. I'm looking for core areas where there's funnels, pinch points, um, rub lines. I do most of my scouting from February, right after the uh, primitive flintlock season, and I'll run it till about August. August, I'll really, by that point, should have my deer pinned down to the ones that I want to try to hunt on, some of the bigger bucks, but they're deep. So I'm looking for their bedding areas, their sanctuaries. Deer need food, they need cover, and they need water. Those three things, if you can put that puzzle together, it'll help you become more successful. I've hunted the game lands for about, roughly 45 years. I've been very blessed, I've been very successful, but I hunt hard. I put a lot of time in. Boots on the ground, it's very important. The longer I can be in those mountains and trying to define where these areas are that these bedding and these bucks go to and the does once they're pressured is what I look for. When I'm out scouting, especially closer to season, I'll minimize my time of field then and I'll try to use off hours, maybe 11 a.m. to 4 o'clock. I'll try to stay off of that mountain when they're moving to the bedding and when they're leaving it. Uh, what I'm looking for at that point they're starting to put uh, rubs on the trees. These rubs mean a lot. There's a lot of significance to a rub and a rub line. Normally, if you're on still hilly terrain, these deer are coming up with the rubs, you know he's going to bed probably or headed in that direction. If the rubs are facing down that mountain, that means it's probably toward evening or late evening and he's headed down to the food sources looking for those does. So what you do then is try to just pinpoint that rub line and get as close to that bedding area as I can. And I'll set up on those fringes so that I don't push those bucks out of those areas. I'll hang a stand and I'll sit there. Scent control is the key, it's a must, but it's one component. Uh, I utilize scent lock sprays, washes, soaps. I keep all my clothing in a tote. I dress in the field. Uh, I rely also on the fact of when those bucks are on their feet. If it's daytime hours and I'm just getting footage of them or I've seen them, I'm in the woods if I'm off and able to get there. That to me is the greatest chance you can get to harvest that deer because they make mistakes usually once a good buck, you may only see them once in the season. Maximize your time at that time with good scent control. You know, at the end of the day, I'd rather be lucky than good, and luck has a lot to do with it. But percentage-wise, myself or the people that I hunt with on game lands, we do really well. I'd say probably an average is 80% K 
kill ratio throughout the ongoing years. On game lands, you may only see that deer one time. You may not see that big buck in legal shooting light and in the regular hunting season. So we'll just have to make a decision at the time of maybe why we shot this deer. We do a lot of calling. I put a lot of emphasis on grunting, bleeding, doe bleats, um, the growl, but only at certain times. You know, you have to watch those deer and the deer movement to realize, okay, this point of the season, they're aggressive. They're looking for does. They're challenging one another. Snort weeds, grunts, bleats. Last year, I killed a buck in archery season. I hunted one day. I was running camera all season. I decided that Saturday I'm gonna go hunt. It's on, it's close to the rut. Right at daylight, I start my sequence, a few run, uh, grunts, and then the bleat can. It wasn't five minutes, I look down and I see antler stand. He's a good buck, big body. He was about 180 pounds on the hoop. Six point, he come up through there, ears pinned back, hair bristled up. At that point, that's what it's all about. Just closing that deal, knowing that you called that buck in, a deer that is older, that has seen and heard, has been jumped by many hunters, and I was able to put an arrow in him. To me, that's what the hunt's about. It's the whole picture. It's not the kill, it's that whole situation where I was in control in his domain, was able to bring that buck within 20 yards of my bow and stick a, a gill into that animal and have a great harvest and wonderful memory. Okay, well, that's just some of the pointers and tips for you people out there. We hunt public ground. It is hard. It is different. But you can be successful, as you've seen. We've been fairly successful over the years. But I've been hunting for 45 years. So hopefully these tips will help you and your hunting partners be successful in the field. Once again, thank you for watching Wired Outdoors. And God bless. Thanks, Don, and it just goes to show hunting the PA State game lands can be tough, but it's possible. It's going to take a lot of work, and you're going to bust your butt, but year in, year out, Don's getting it done. So again, Don, thank you so much for all the tips and tricks, and thank you all for joining us on Wired Outdoors.